I am a member of the Emmaus community, and uh, many of you know that our members of the Emmaus community, we have a little prayer to say before we do a talk. And uh, I would like to do that at this point. If you bow your heads. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle it now to the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created, and you shall be in the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. Now the vast majority of the scripture is 
address to the general community of the Wiggins. And within that community is the personal relationship God has with his people. In Exodus 33, 17, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken I will do. You have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Just as God proclaimed to Moses, we have a shepherd, Jesus, who knows us by name. Knowing that we are known by name is comforting for us because we know we are not just another part of a large crowd. It is because through this crowd that we are a part of it, that we are known by name. Individualism is an enemy of discipleship. Even in the secular world, we can see destruction caused by it. Now, that every generation, for years and years and years, has a group of people that have cried out, live for the moment as their guide. To live for the moment is to live for you. If we don't consider our predecessors for what is to come after, we lose a sense of belonging. Now sometimes we forget that we are part of a succession of generations originating in the past and stretching into the future. And I'm sure many of us have heard the hooray for me attitude. Many people make statements about our younger generation displaying the hooray for me attitude, which is actually nothing new. Every generation had the same common name, and future generations will have the same common name. Jesus had to contend, contend with the same pattern 2,000 years ago. Now we have to be careful though. When we say that the hooray for me attitude is confined to the younger people, it can stay with us right into our golden years. I have attended churches that get stuck in their ways. They are comfortable where they are and they don't want to explore anything new. And they become stale. The call of Christ to go and serve is personal, but it's not private. The call is through the community of faith of which we are a part of. It links us with the past and it gives us a vision of the future. Now the second message from this gospel is about priorities. When the call from Jesus was received by the young man in our gospel, he said, okay, but first let me go do this and that. Now Jesus made it clear that those types of priorities were out of line with the kingdom of God. And this is a message that some Christians of today need to hear loud and clear. What is number one on our list of priorities? Now it's going to vary depending on the situation we are in. On Sunday morning for an hour or so, Jesus is our number one priority. And that is great. But what about and on Tuesday at 3 o'clock, what's our priority? Or maybe on Friday evening at 10, what's our priority then? Or even a Saturday afternoon? Or first thing when we wake up in the morning, what's our priority? Is it Jesus? Is he number one? And then I have to ask myself, <coughs> even, how often does Jesus rank number one on my personal priority list? I need to do better. I'm not perfect, and I know it. Sometimes I just forget that I need to go to him first before I move on. How often when we are asked to do something for the church, do we find an excuse why we can't do that job? How much different are we from the young man that Jesus called? The young man that said, okay, 
But first, let me go do this, or let me go do that. <coughs> Excuse me. A third insight from this gospel grows out of the context in which Jesus spoke. We are told that he set his face to go to Jerusalem. For many of us, vacation time is a time of journeys. This weekend has already proven to be a very busy with those that are traveling for the 4th of July on Thursday. We go to different parts of this great land and see people we haven't seen for some time or enjoy <coughs> some great sights. The trips that we plan are different from the journey we see Jesus start in today's gospel. His journey is strange, painful, necessary, and beneficial. It's painful because at the end is the cross of Calvary. Strange because of the statements he says along the way. And it was necessary and beneficial because it opened the way to eternal life for you and me. When the Samar Samaritans refused Jesus' hospitality, the disciples wanted to call down fire from heaven to destroy their city as punishment. They remembered when Elijah called down the fire from the past and destroyed the image of the Baal priest. But Jesus said their ideals is not the way of the cross. This is repeated when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus and Peter cuts off the ear of one of them. Jesus heals the ear, tells Peter to stop fighting, and continues on to the cross. Jesus will choose what God calls him. The urgency felt as he stayed, as he started to Jerusalem to die, is hard for us to fathom. We don't always have much understanding for it. On our own journey through life, each of us will come to those times when we know it's now or never. We know when everything else must be dropped and do what this moment requires. It's a defining moment, and we want to do the right thing. Now, all of us are, are called to go and proclaim the kingdom. Some of us are called to proclaim it in different ways and under different conditions. It doesn't matter where we live or who we are or how many talents we have. The gospel message today affects each and every one of us. It will come into play when we have to make decisions to go here or there, or to say or do what God asks of us. When we face difficult decisions, we have to remember that Jesus is always with us on our life journey. We need, we need to learn all we can about this traveling companion, Jesus, who is with us and who helps us. As we come to know him through reading our Bible, through prayer, Bible studies, and communion with different people in different Christians in the church, we will learn more about the many wonderful ways we can he will be there during the good times. He will be there in difficulties, in our sorrows, and everything that we go through. So let's do a short recap. He told the first person to count the cost of being a follower before he said yes to become one. Some people don't think there is supposed to be very little difference when they join a church and follow Christ. But Christ says differently. It should make all the difference in the world. He told the second person that the dead bury their own head. Would you go and pro 
proclaim the kingdom of God. Now this speaks directly to you and me. People have a really tough time with Christ saying that the dead carry the dead. But what Jesus was trying to tell us, that in everything, we face a crucial moment of decision. If we put off to tomorrow to do what we know is the right thing to do, we probably will never do it. I know sometimes I put things off to tomorrow and it's like, ah, a week later I still haven't done it. To the third person, Christ is saying he doesn't accept lukewarm service. Anybody that tries to drive a car, looking through the back window, is going to have a rough time. Our focus should not be on the sunset that has closed the day, but on the dawn that opens new possibilities for us. When we insist on living in the past, that is where we will stay. Me and mine are words that influence our culture. But the words of faith are we and ours. We belong to God and to one another. Now this coming week, we're going to be celebrating Independence Day. We will be celebrating the freedom of our country. Don't take it lightly. Many have sacrificed everything they have for our freedom. But let's also lay claim to the freedom that is our birthright as Christians. We can truly say we are free only when we are joined with Christ. This Independence Day, celebrate the freedom of our country and every day celebrate your freedom through Christ. God loves you and so do I. Amen.